Hey there folks, got a UU battle for you today against Sucker for Jessica. Um, looking at his team, I see both a Mew and a Gorba something, yep, a Baton Pass. Gotta really watch out for that, gotta really not let him set up. I think I have, well I have two Pokemon with priority, um, but even so, depending on who he Baton Passes into, could be a huge, huge problem. Uh, gonna lead off with Patrick, I really don't like that sprite hack. Uh, the, the sleeve inconsistency really bugs me. It's not really very well done. I'll try to replace it if I can find a better one. Anyway, his Mew goes ahead and taunts. I didn't know what set this Mew was running. Uh, I mean, I figured it was some kind of baton pass set, so um, I just went ahead and set up Selthrox first turn, and he blocked me with a taunt, so that's okay. Here I'm going for the Psychic just to see basically what set this is. Uh, it's a leftover set, so it's some kind of... It's, it looks like to be a support set, uh, further evidenced by the fact that he has Seismic Toss. Gonna switch out into Clank, um, thinking that maybe he runs something like Thunder Wave, or rather, you know, Seismic Toss wouldn't do anything either, so that's great for me. Clank is gonna be a hard counter to this Mew, uh, as evidenced by the fact that he's switching straight out. Uh, goes into his Machamp, gonna go for the Shadow Punch, just not wanting to overpredict. I could've gone for the sub, but, you know, just in case he had something that could actually hit me, it wouldn't have been great. I'm um, gonna call back Clank at this point, uh, just in case this thing carries the Ice Punch. I don't know that it does, but I don't want to be get hit by an Ice Punch. He goes for the sub on the Switch, leading me to think that maybe he was bluffing here. Maybe he really doesn't have anything to hit my Golurk, but either way, I'm gonna be able to set up, uh, set up my Stealth Rocks, and I'm really glad that this uh, set for UC carries Psychic and not, say, U-Turn. U-Turn is generally the better move. Um, because it allows you to keep up your momentum, uh, but uh, in this case it really, really behooves me to have Psychic so I can hit strong fighting type and also poison type on the uh, Pokemon. It's actually, Psychic, the reason Psychic's on the set is for Nidoking. Uh, this is kind of my hardest counter for Nidoking. Anyway, he goes ahead and hits me with some stone edges. I'm taking those hits rather well. I'm down to 123 HP. I'm not going to be able to take too many more hits. Here I'm bringing the switch, and I'm just going to go ahead and go for the rest, just to get maximum recovery, get back up to full, full health. I am running a Resto Chesto set, so that is going to be a great uh, little bit for me. So Patrick is now going to recover back up to full HP, and I'm going to wake up with my Chesto Berry. Uh, Chesto, not Lum anymore. I finally swapped out that item. It was running Lum for the longest time, and Lum just would have just a, a stupid item to have um, when all I really want it for is the rest. So anyway, uh, switching to Tux, thinking the strongest special attacker on my team. Uh, he goes ahead and scalds me, doesn't get the burn, luckily. He does pop my air balloon. That's not going to be great for me, but it's not going to be awful. Uh, here I go for the Grass Knot, and I do hit, I mean obviously I hit, he, he stays in is what I mean, and I'm like, wow that's doing a lot of damage, yeah I got the crit, I'm willing to bet that crit mattered, I'll have the calcs up in the annotations, but yeah I doubt I really could have failed. Uh, now I could stay in here and just do a massive amount uh, to Registeel, but I don't want to get T-waved, and I'm thinking that Clank is probably a pretty hard counter. Uh, he's got the Earthquake, so I'm really glad I switched out. I don't often see these things carrying actually attacking moves. I mean, I guess some run Charge Beam, this guy runs Earthquake. It's an interesting set. Uh, I'm just really glad that I switched out. Earthquakes really aren't doing anything to me, especially after um, Leftovers Recovery. Out's gonna come Machamp. Here I go for the sub, and so now I really get to see, does he carry the Ice Punch? Um, now here we see that his Machamp is faster, so gotta gotta be worried about that if he does carry the Ice Punch. I'm only gonna get one shot at uh, killing him. I'm gonna go for the Focus Punch. Uh, it's the attack of mine that does the most damage. Um, I think it actually... No, it does slightly, slightly more than um, Earthquake, thanks to um, Iron Fist. So here I go ahead, punch him with a uh, Focus Punch. He survived the sliver of HP. That's actually not hacks. Uh, I did the calcs and saw that, based on this being a standard Machamp set, I really could not have KO'd. But at this point, now he can't sub, he can't do anything else except for attack. He really can't even switch. Well, maybe he could switch, uh, you know, and the, he could just survive on switching back in. Anyway, switching out Patrick here, he expected to switch out probably into someone else. Um, I take that dynamic punch okay, and as long as I don't hit myself with the confusion, this is a KO. Indeed, Patrick breaks through the confusion yet again, has not hit itself once in the confusion, even though it, it was confused once before. So that's really, I'm getting a lot of hacks, but eh, 
whatever. Uh, Gorbis is now out. This is his baton passer. It's going to get off a shell smash. I know this is going to happen. Um, I switch out into my Hugabug. He's going to go for the shell smash, and here I've just got to hope uh, two things. Number one, that this isn't an attacking set. Uh, and number two, that whoever he switches out is not going to enjoy getting a thunder to the face. I mean, no one's going to enjoy getting a thunder to the face. He's got the white herbs, so that means that his defense isn't, in fact, lowered. Um, so I'm just thinking, okay, who is, who is he going to switch out? Is it going to be able to take a thunder? I'm really not sure. Oh, it's going to come wheezing. So I'm like, come on, thunder. I'm hoping, actually, that thunder gets the paralysis. That's what I'm hoping for more than anything. Uh, I get the KO. No crit involved. That was amazing. Uh, completely wasted baton pass setup. He's wasted his white herb, so I don't see him doing that again. I'm actually going to leave in Hugabug uh, just to keep on hitting this Registeel. I really could send Golurk back out, but I'm just going to keep on uh, attacking here. Now he's going to get up his Stealth Rocks. That's probably good for him. I think he was expecting me to switch, but I'm just going for the Thunders, uh, hoping to KO. Uh, it turns out the Thunder's not quite enough to KO. Um, or to a KO, rather. He's gonna go ahead and T-wave me now. That's fine. Uh, Hugabug is basically in here for Death Fodder. Uh, not necessarily Death Fodder, but I just really wanted to put this Registeel dead. Here he goes for the Seismic Toss. I can take exactly... So, next turn, uh, he's going to be able to KO me with the Seismic Toss. And my Thunder misses! This is the... So he gets a bit of hacks right back. Now I'm just like, okay, well... Bye bye, Hugabug. You did a really great job. He actually goes for the Earthquake, not realizing that he could have taken me out with a Seismic Toss. So that was excellent for me. I KO with a T-Bolt, and that is a dead um, Registeel, although it does cost me my Hugabug, uh, thanks to Life Orb Recoil. I really should re-breed this thing so that it has um, you know, 279 HP rather than 281. Uh, I would take one HP less on each life orb hit. Anyway, he's going to go ahead and taunt me with his Mew, expecting me to sleep powder. No, I'm just going to go out straight for an attacking move. Going to go for the power whip, thinking it's the attack that's going to do the most amount of damage. It's not even going to be a 2 hit KO. This is really not a good situation for me. I really should do a switch out. <clears throat> But I'm just really fearing that he's going to switch out into Gorbis. Uh, to add insult to injury, he's going to go ahead and T-Wave here. Uh, again, not going to be good for me. I go for the Earthquake just for the 100% accuracy. Again, thinking that I'm going to draw Gorbis out. But really, he has no reason to switch out into Gorbis. Uh, now, here I'm expecting either Roost or another kind of recovery move. Indeed, his Mew is going to go for the recover. I'm not actually sure why I stayed in. This would have been the perfect opportunity to switch out. I really, I just, I was not, I was really, 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 really not wanting his Gorbis to get a free switch in. Um, so power up ain't doing jack. Um, my taunt wears off. I'm actually going to call back at this point thinking that he's just going to taunt again to prevent the sleep powder. Um, and that'll give me a free switch into Clank. Um, and indeed, it does work out just as I said. Uh, Clank is out. He goes for the taunt. That means I can't set up my sub, but that's okay. Uh, now here I do the most epic prediction of the battle, and actually one of the best predictions I've ever done. Here he's going to call back Mew and go into Gorbis. Now, had I gone for the Shadow Punch, would not have KO'd. Uh, instead, I'm going to go for the Focus Punch, which will deliver the KO. Now, I need to explain about this. His Mew couldn't have hit me. Uh, even if his Mew had stayed in, it still would have gotten hit by that Focus Punch because he has literally no moves on his Mew to hit me. So all that means is that I get an epic kill against Gorbis. Unprotected Focus Punch for the win because uh, Sucker for Jessica is just going to run here. So that's good game. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, folks. Comment, rate, subscribe, and challenge.